YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. What's going on, guys? What's going on? Let's see who joins up. I told you guys I was going to go live at night. So this is night number one live stream in Colorado. We are in Brighton, Brighton, Colorado. Let everybody join up a little bit. We'll get to talk. I'll, I'll recap what happened for today. Hopefully, you guys already watched the video. Hopefully, you guys already saw the recap. Hey, Tony, first. <laughs> What's going on? You guys are on my cell phone. So bear with me trying to catch up on the chat like this. Um, yeah, I, I, didn't, I don't have a computer out here right now. So using my cell phone. But uh, let everybody join in. Lloyd Christmas, what's up? Tony says, I'm excited for this. Brian is a beast. Yeah. Uh, DJ Techno Boom, what up, dude? Daniel Yurik, there he is. Daniel, come back to the Discord. Stop being weird. Johnny Dang, sup, dude? Thanks for coming through, you guys. So this is night one. Um, we were here last night, but we didn't start filming till today, right? I hope Pradeep covers this collaboration. This is huge news for arm wrestling. This is huge news for arm wrestling, I think. That's why I was so excited about doing the uh, the collab. Uh, Tuba Joe, yo, what's going on? What's cracking? Thanks for coming through, Tuba. We'll see. Uh, we're going to let this build up a little bit, and I'll get into what I did today. I don't want to keep re-saying the whole day again and recapping the whole thing. So let, let it build up a little bit. We'll get into it, guys. Linking up with Rockville tomorrow in Tulsa, Arizona, says Johnny. Oh, cool. That's random, but awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, it's been it's been uh, nice out here in Brighton. It was a little windy by the time we came back to the hotel. Um, it looks like Tornadoville, USA. Everything, it's real flat. And so, it, you know, me and Bridget got a little scared because it got pretty windy. But uh, we're so we're, we're okay. We're okay for now. Uh, guys, I'm about to slap Derek and Brian up video next week. <laughs> Tuba, Joe, Tuba Joe, don't forget to uh, to like the stream. Ooh. Yeah, you guys are going to get a thumbs up on this. Great. Are you going to leave a table for Brian? Yeah, that's Brian's table. Um, another, I want to say this a few times. Once again, though, Arm Assassin Strength Shop, Lucas Raymond. Huge shout out, you guys. Lucas Raymond hooked this whole thing up in terms of um, I needed a table. I needed something to work with Brian. So he sent Brian Shaw his own table, the right color and everything, so it matches Brian's gym. Sent him a bunch of handles and stuff so Brian can train for arm wrestling. So Brian has a whole setup of how to, to train for arm wrestling. He has the whole thing here, right? It's all good, all because of Lucas Raymond and Arm Assassin. So if you guys get a chance, check out Arm Assassin Strength Shop. They have everything. Lucas Raymond has everything. And, uh, and you know, hit him up and say thank you and stuff because he made that whole part of it possible. Um, Lucas Raymond came through in the clutch. Big time, big time, big time. So thank you. Uh, how strong is Brian Shaw in armrest? I'm going to get to that, Bobby Ray Paris. I promise. I just wanted to build up the chat a little bit more, let a few people join up before we really start recapping the whole day. Um, I just didn't want to, I don't want to keep repeating myself a bunch of times. So I'll kind of let it build up a little bit, and then I'm going to recap the entire day, exactly what I did with Brian today and my thoughts. Uh, we're filming again tomorrow. We are going to do grip stuff, and also we're going to do some strap work because um, – yeah, we, we I completely spaced on the strap work today. So we didn't put on the we didn't go over the straps at all. Uh, so we're gonna do that tomorrow. Um, yeah, let's see. Everyone is in the Dave Chafee interview, but it's ending right now. Okay, cool. I, um, who what who's interviewing Dave Chafee? Uh, Bobby Paris. I think nice. I think it's awesome. You're teaching him. Yeah, dude. It. I had a great time. I, I had a great time. Um, yeah, Brian. Brian's fantastic. We we got along like peas and carrots. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, can't wait to watch the podcast. Yeah, the podcast is cool. Um, yeah, okay. We'll recap the whole thing. I'm going to get into each, each thing. Uh, once we hit 30 people in here. All right, we're at 26. Once we hit 30 people in here. Oh, he's with Brandon Allen. Okay. Uh, once we hit 30 people in here, I'll, I'll go over. I'll recap the day. Brian Shaw, hands feel. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Let me get into it. How is Brian liking the uh, eighth there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strap work. <laughs> Teach. <laughs> yes, I'm having a great time. Who's wa wait? Who's watching Chave? Says Johnny. Chave's good. We made sure he's good. We watered him before we left. Chave is set for sure. Uh, delusional blue monster says compare Larry Wheels. Uh, compared to Larry, where does he compare? Uh, who does Brian style gonna be? I count as four. Uh, maybe get Brian to teach you how to do strongman. <laughs> now he, he, we talked about that a little bit. Yes, you know because I get brought up. Uh, people ask me a lot. Are you gonna do strongman because of my build. I, I told Brian today because he asked the same thing. He's like, you didn't want to get into it? And I said, no, man. I don't want to – like, I don't like being underneath a soul-crushing amount of weight. <laughs> like, having a 1,000 pounds or something over me scares the crap out of me. I'm good. I'll just arm wrestle some people. It's already scary enough when I'm underneath, like, a 400-pound bench and start getting all weird. All right, 31 people, 32 people. People are joining up. All right, I'm going to start the recap now. Um, yeah. 
So I don't know if you guys watched the video. I just released it about an hour ago, uh, kind of doing some behind the scenes recapping of the day. Um, obviously the, the meat and potatoes, the big parts of the videos are for Brian's channel, which is how I would have it. That's perfect. Uh, because he has the bigger, bigger audience and stuff like that. And so he definitely has the big parts of it. I wanted to do some behind the scenes footage and I want to go live with you guys at night. So that's this. And I released the behind the scenes footage for the day. So we'll probably do the same thing tomorrow, more behind the scenes footage. And then I'll, I'll try to go live again tomorrow. Um, yeah, because tomorrow's Wednesday, I go live anyway. So I'll definitely be live tomorrow uh, at some point. I'll try to keep as close to my normal time frame as possible. So this morning, we head out to Brian's house. We have a sweet breakfast over here at the hotel. Um, this continental breakfast was amazing here, first off. They have like scrambled eggs and sausage and all the things. Um, and then we go, we go to Brian's. You see the video. I'm so excited, guys. Like, I hope I didn't come across as a creep to Brian, especially at the beginning, because I was ecstatic. Like a kidney. I, I, I don't know. I'm just such a big fan of Brian. I've, I've been following Brian for a while because, for a few reasons. One, he's a big man. The you know same height as me, relatively. Obviously, he's bigger than me. Um, but I don't know. He's just his whole approach to to strength and to to rehab work and to just be a professional and to take getting strong at uh, the highest level with like you know he has the whole background the finest training equipment he he works with the top dietitians he has everything there I don't think there's anybody that has it more dialed in on how to get strong and how to be a strong human being uh, than Brian Shaw and I and I've thought that for a long time so when I'm trying to get ideas or I'm trying to realize how to get become a stronger person uh, myself I I I watch Brian. I watch Brian's diet, how he does. Like I, I just default to Brian a lot. I always have. So to land this collab was a big deal in general. So we're on our way out there. I am giddy. I am like freaking out. As you can see in the beginning of the video, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're pulling to Brian Shaw's house. When he walked out of the uh, of the garage and, he first, and I first saw him, I was just like trying not to be weird. <laughs> I was just like, Brian Shaw. Like he was so big when he walked out. I was like, dude. What's up, man? I, I didn't want to film him because I thought it'd be weird if I like filming him when he walks out of his own garage. Like, you know, I don't know. That's a little that's a little much. So um, shake hands, everything. We go inside. Uh, we see we see everybody over there. Um, Carrie and we see um, we see Crystal and we see James. So Crystal is kind of like one of the managers that helps out with the shops and stuff like that. And James is the guy behind the camera. He's the one that runs the kind of the YouTube. Um, and then Carrie is Brian's wife. So we walk in and they're all packaging stuff up and they're work, you know in the in the warehouse section they're all getting packages ready and stuff and working on that. I say hi to everyone. We go to the gym. Uh, once we're in the gym, I pretty quickly went. Uh, oh, we talked for a little bit. Uh, me, Brian, and and Bridget. That one. <laughs> I talked. I talked to Brian uh, for a while. We chop it up. Um, and then we get busy. I do the I do the tour of the gym. You guys saw that if you watched the video. I do the whole tour of Brian's gym, kind of giving it a once over because it's a freaking awesome gym. Um, and then we got into you know we we talked we talked a bunch off camera. We talked uh, for hours, uh, uh, the five of us. Um, but we get into the training video. So the first video that we film is the uh, the first video we film is us on the table. It's all technique work. It's ABCs arm wrestling. First I go over safety, how to not break your arm. Then we get into, you know, um, I have him, I have him start hooking. We learn a basic hook and then, uh, and then we get into a top roll and start working basic top rolling a little bit, just over the motions. Obviously I'm not trying to get too in detail with him. I'm not trying to overload him. Uh, I'm telling him a lot of the stuff I'm, I'm giving him right now is just the basics. Obviously you can't overload somebody. I could talk and go in depth and do the, the craziest stuff. Um, I could, I got a question about arm wrestling. Do you have your wrist pop out a lot like the ear popping out of place? No, mine don't. I, I, I'm gonna start, guys, I'm not gonna be in the chat too much right now until I'm done recapping and then I'll sit in the chat with you guys. Uh, first, I'm just gonna kind of get this all out and then uh, and then I'll get into the chat. So we are, we're arm wrestling, we're training. Uh, we didn't really go all out. So there was a couple, first off, when I grew up with Brian, his hand is about the same size as mine in terms of like fingertip to to palm, it's probably about the same size. If not, mine might be like a smidge bigger or longer. Uh, it's about the same size. Tomorrow, we have plans of taking um, a measuring tape and we're gonna try to get you guys his measurements. His wrist measurement, hand measurement, things like that. Well, I know a lot of the arm wrestling community wants to know Brian's measurements to see how he measures up with everybody. So I'm gonna, me and Bridger were asking him yesterday if he had a measuring tape, he says, yeah. So tomorrow I'm really gonna try to, uh, to make that happen. Hopefully Bridger remembers. I'll try to remind her to, to bring it up more so I don't forget. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna measure Brian Cause up. He's huge. Yeah, because Brian Brian's big. She was like, "Oh man, your wrist is way bigger than Derek's." <laughs> Hater. <laughs> so um, so we are messing, but there was a few instances 
where Brian would kind of hit the gas a little bit. Like I was having, I was teaching him how to initiate a hook and, and what a hook is and what an inside move is and how to how to look for like the wrist collision, you know, when you're going for a deep hook and things like that. And there'd be a few times after we got into the hook, I was like, tell him, all right, start pulling backwards. And he would kind of start hitting the gas a little bit. Uh, he definitely wasn't going all out. There was no like Argh! going at it. Uh, but I, I, I thought I felt him hit the gas and I, and I was giving him some stops. I was kind of stopping his arm. Um, so I got a, 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 a small glimpse of potentially how strong he is on, on a table in an arm wrestling position. Um, but uh, Ricky Walker with the stickers, man. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate Ricky Walker. First first super chat of the night or super sticker of the night. Ricky, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. Um, so we're on the table and it's just when you grab him, you can feel that his hand and wrist and everything is just rock solid. You can feel that there's hundreds of pounds of muscle behind everything like his arm is just massive and every movement he does when he's just trying to learn even like doing stuff like this just moving his arm i can just feel so much girth and, <laughs> and muscle behind it it's weird uh so we're kind of talking about stuff and every once in a while we're going through the motions he would would just like you know want to go shoulder forward or something for a second right while he's still learning the technique but even his shoulder forward like ugly arm wrestling move while he's learning felt like a like a tank. I was like, oh my God. Like it, he was just like, like this. And I was like, oh, stop. Or, no, 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 not like that. <laughs> but there was still like hundreds of pounds of pressure in whatever angle he would want to go. There's just so much pressure. And he, he's just such a massively strong person. So when I would be able to isolate his bicep, when I get him in really arm wrestling um, position, like really standard arm wrestling positions, like standard hooks and stuff like that, then I could feel um, super strong still, but I could feel there was there was some spots where I'm like, okay, now I can kind of feel your arm wrestling strength, like good form arm wrestling strength, right? Um, and it was strong. It was definitely strong. I would say, I was trying to think, because I knew you guys were going to ask a bunch of times, like, how strong is he? Is he on the level? Can he beat LeVon next week, tomorrow? Um, I don't know about all that, right? So, and I even, I told Brian the, the same thing. Um, I would say, if... If, even if today, if he was able to put it together today, like just a little more, right? In terms of knowing how to use the muscles together and knowing how to kind of coordinate the, the pressures and things like that, I feel like he would be a little bit stronger than my teammate, Mega Mike. Now, if you, for those of you guys that follow me, you guys know Mega Mike is easily uh, probably the, the second strongest arm, right arm in California, someone I grew up with a lot. The Mike beat me at uh, the last time we pulled in a tournament. He beat me right now. I'm whooping his ass at practice. But in general, Mike is a super strong human. Been in the sport about three years, and that's the best person that I pull with on the regular that I can equate him with. Um, and that's just off the gates, first time ever on the table, just trying to figure it out, just figure out what the pressure is. It's just there's so much there. Uh, but like I said, he doesn't know how to put it all together yet. So. We talked a lot about that, and then I had him top rolling, and I was trying to hold on and contain him. And top rolling, um, you know, it's a lot of technique. It's a lot to learn in terms of how to get into people's fingertips, to regrip, to cap the thumb. There's like a lot going on there for your day one first time on a table, right? So to expect Brian to be some amazing top roller or amazing hook puller day one is, is ridiculous, right? Nobody, it doesn't click like that for anybody that fast. Uh, but I, yeah, like I was able to feel some of his pressure. So I, at one point, I had him trying to contain me, and I was able to roll him out, but. I'm rolling him out like I'm underneath the table. I'm rocking back like, and I, you know, I barely crack his wrist open, right? And that was with me knowing what I'm doing and him pretty much just trying to flat cup down. So it's at a high level. He's definitely at a high level. There's no way around it. He's definitely a very strong guy. Um, now, that's with no training and, and still not knowing what he's doing on a table really or and not used to these pressures. Um, after we did the, the, the little bit, oh, it was a little bit of table time. We were on there for, how long were you doing the table time part, you think? Long time. <laughs> Long time. Probably like an hour or so. Um, then we switch to, we go to the um, the gym section. So we take all the handles uh, that Lucas Raymond sent him, Arm Assassin Straight Shop, shout out again. Lucas Raymond sent him a bunch of handles, a cone handle, you know, rolling handles, all types of pronation handles and stuff like that. We go over to the gym section and we go to his pulley system. And we start, um, I, we do a shoot another video of me showing him like how to use these handles, how to isolate um, and, and how to target certain muscles in your arms, right? Pronation and rising and cupping and finger pressures and things like that. We start getting into all that. Um, and afterwards, you, you guys watch that video. If you guys don't know how to use those handles, hopefully I help you guys, you know, understand a little more on how to use the handles. Um, but at the end of that, I don't think it's on video. No, we weren't, we weren't recording anymore. But you guys get to see me show them all the handles. But afterwards, we're talking, and, and Brian asked uh, for 
he asked, he, he asked for those certain numbers. Now, a few times during the day, he had asked, is there any like set numbers? Because there are, obviously he's from a strongman background and he's asking if there's any like certain specific handle and specific movements where everybody does this exact same lift and there's a set number. So he can know when he hits that number if he's at a top level. Now I told him not really, right? There's no very strict movement or, or hold or handle that really shows, all right, you're, you, you're ready to go face LeVon, right? There's too many ways to cheat in the lifts. There's too many different handles, too many different pulleys. Uh, it, it doesn't, it's not exactly, it doesn't exactly carry over like that. And I told him that, but I said, I'll tell you what, if you're trying to, if you're trying to think of a large number, right? And there's something to compare yourself with. I said, this is what I can tell you. I said, I have this, this, and this handle. I showed him the handles that I have. And I was like, I have these handles. I said, I'll go on your pulley system right here and then I'll show you what I can do on it and what I, what my working sets are with right now at my current level. And then I can tell you that much. So you can at least have that to kind of bank off of, right? So I put on the whole stack for this rolling handle. Ricky Walker with another $5 super sticker chat. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. you always dropping the stickers, man. Thank you. Um, so I take the handle and I put it on the pulley system. And uh, I think it was like a, a hundred pounds or, or more. And it was on, on like Juji's spinning handle. And I start cupping, right? And I tell Brian, I was like, okay, with this weight, I can probably do uh, about 15 reps or so, right? With that, with that rolling handle, letting it go completely straight and letting it go completely flat. Um, and that, that felt about right. About 15, it felt like I could do about 15, right? I didn't do 15. I was like, oh, yeah, it feels like I can do about 15 of those. Uh, Brian walks up. I'm like, okay, give it a go. And the exact same handle and the exact same reps or uh, rep or angle, he starts doing wrist. Now he didn't get, he can't get his wrist as flat as I can get mine yet. Um, but he did an easy, uh, four reps kind of just still talking to me like, okay, kind of, kind of like this. And that was with an easy four reps, right? So I think I can do 15. He did an easy four to stop because we were talking. Um, so I don't know how many he could do. Uh, he couldn't get his wrist as tight, but okay. So that gives you some kind of number. If you guys are obsessed on getting a number, how strong is he in certain ways? Uh, in, in wrist curling, he was already really strong, right? Uh, lacks in the range of motion a little bit, but already he has a ton of hand and wrist uh, strength for sure. Now, it's, it, can those lifts carry over to arm wrestling? Will they transition exactly to the table? That just takes time. It takes time and, and table practice, right? Uh, so we talked a lot about that. We had a great time. And then um, after this, we go to uh, we go inside and we break for lunch. Um, Carrie, and, uh, Carrie and Crystal had gone to Dickie's Barbecue and bought a bunch of barbecue food. You guys see in the video, I kind of show it real quick. And uh, we all sit down, we have a nice lunch. Uh, Bridget ate a ton of barbecue food. <laughs> no, she doesn't eat meat, she's a vegetarian, so she had mac and cheese and salad. Uh, but, and mashed potatoes. Oh, and mashed potatoes, sorry. And so, uh, beans. yeah, and beans. <laughs> so we, we sit down, the five of us, uh, or, well, six of us, sorry. And, um, the six of us just kind of chop it up a little bit about, you know, we're eating lunch and we're just talking about strongman events. We're talking about how strongman carries over, you know, the way strongman is, is similar to arm wrestling in some ways and uh, just about life in general. So um, a great chat. And then after that, uh, we I do the video for you guys. So you guys see the, 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 the warehouse and you guys see everybody sitting at their desks. And then we go into the podcast. Um, I show you guys the little podcast set up in the, in the video I just released. And then um, we chopped it up. So the, the podcast went 120 minutes, I think. Yes. Um, and basically most of the podcast, um, me and Brian are talking, but a lot of it's him trying to hear my story, kind of how I got to wherever I'm at and my thoughts on things. Uh, obviously, he, he comments and talks about like when you know things are similar for him and how he can um, how he can sympathize with things or how it relates to him. Um, and we're, and we're just chopping it up. So if you guys haven't heard my full story about how I got into arm wrestling and stuff, it's a lot of people when they hear it say it's kind of interesting though, because a lot of people don't know I used to be a professional video game player and things like that. Oh, $20 super chat from my mom. <laughs> Hi mom. Thank you for being in this, in, in the, in the chat room. I appreciate it. <laughs> and then delusional blue monster with a $5 super chat. The Masarenko strength test that LeVon and others have done is a number you can tell Brian. I, I, can, I will link that to him. I have Brian's phone number now. Chat, you know, we're boys. <laughs> so I can, I can definitely link him to those videos. It's just making sure um, the pulley systems they're using, the same pulley system he's using, and making sure he has the exact same handles and stuff. It, it's I can. And I'll link him to those numbers if he wants to try to compare himself to Larry, LeVon, and Michael Todd. Um, 
But yeah, I guess that would be a good video. I guess that would be a good video to kind of tell him about, I guess, to have him watch. Because he, he is trying to get a, a kind of a vibe for where he's at numbers-wise with everybody else. Which makes sense because from, from his background. Um, so yeah, I need to send him that link. I'll, I'll try to remember that. Um, but so the conversation in the podcast went really well. Um, I got, you know, I try to get a few clips of things for you guys. And I got the, I got the heated question, you know, Brian Shaw, are you going to be an arm wrestler or get an arm wrestling? And the answer he gave you guys was the answer he gave me off camera a few times. You know, who knows, right? He has some stuff going on. He really likes arm wrestling. He was telling me before we even got into it, oh man, I read, you know, this arm wrestling stuff's really interesting. I'm really interested to learn about it. And once we went over all the stuff on the table, the technique stuff, I definitely saw that look in his eye, like, oh, this is cool. Like, oh, this is badass. Like all the counters and the angles and the, the way you do things and how to execute and what to target and things like that. Carolyn Loom's been for 11 months. Carolyn, you're the best. Thank you for being a member for 11 months. Derek, you chop it up so good with the best. Hell yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. You are awesome. Um, so, yeah, we. Uh, but I had asked him a few times and he just basically... Um, he was saying like he wants to, he wants to check it out, take his time. And but if he does, either he's gonna do arm wrestling and he's gonna be all in, or he's not gonna do arm wrestling and it's just something interesting. But I saw that gleam in his eye. I saw that when we were going over the the handles and the and the pulleys, I saw him getting very interested in like, oh man, it'd be so much fun to get really strong in these and crank out some crazy numbers and stuff. And it's a whole new challenge for me, like all new lifts I haven't ever really done. And he he had that look, man. Like he looked really very very interested. Um, I would definitely say that 100%. He seems super interested. Um, so, um, oh, I'm almost done recapping the day, and then we'll get into the chat, guys. Like I said, I'm not reading the chat right now. I'm trying to get, uh, yeah. Um, so, there, there. I had messaged um, Brian, you know, months ago, asking him if he, you know, I was saying I would love to come teach you at Arm Wrestle, man. And I explained why and who I am and why I think I would be a good fit to teach him. And uh, I guess you know he liked it. He liked what I represented. I guess he went back and watched some of my videos or something like that and like liked my vibe and you know, just who I am and figured it would be a good collab. So that's kind of why I'm out here. Um, and the arm wrestling stuff, you know, people have been asking him about arm wrestling forever, of course, right? So it's, it's natural for him to want to learn about it from a professional arm wrestler and, and like legitimately. So he went on Juji's channel, messed around on the table with Juji, but Juji's relatively new and not not an authority figure in arm wrestling. And he wanted someone that really knew what they were talking about and stuff. So I came out here, not, not a knock on Juji, he's, he's new. Uh, so but yeah, he, and he wanted to learn, you know, firsthand. And, uh, and hopefully that's what I gave him. He said he really liked everything I talked about. And he, he realized that in order to get more into the sport, he would need he would need table time. He would need, it, it's a trick. He started to realize like it would take a while. He asked me at, at one point, um, you know, how, how long it would take him to get uh, to a high level, in my opinion, right? And people have varied opinions on this. Everybody thinks different things like that, right? But in my opinion, he said, how, you know, how long do you think it would take for me to like reach a super high, like elite level? And I said, if you did everything correctly, right? So say from right now, you are a genius. Like, I don't, you know, your IQ is crazy. You are adapting. You're learning very quick. Um, you have the perfect team at your disposal. You have all the weights and, and, and you know, whatever, everything to help you get stronger. Yeah, everything's perfect, right? You're the perfect guy, right? We'll say, if you are that guy, then I could, I told him, I could see him by th three years. By three years, I could see him knocking on crazy doors. Now I say three years because he he needs to develop the the table time. He needs to develop the table savvy. He needs to develop his own hook, his own top roll. How to answer these problems? Like how to how to combat everything? Like you guys got to remember, Levon has been arm wrestling since he was like sixteen. He has spent eighteen million hours on an arm wrestling table. I know you only arm wrestles once a year right now, but it doesn't negate all the work he's done. And that's the same thing for every top arm wrestler. They have spent just so many countless hours on a table. So to think that a lot of these guys can just get in the sport and not get su su significant table time and learn all the ins and outs of it and how they get strong, like that's re like ridiculous, guys. In three years, for me to believe, really, I really do believe that within three years, if all that stuff clicked, he could be insane, like absolutely insane for sure. But I'm, I'm on Reddit and I'm on Discord and stuff again. I see a lot of people saying some crazy stuff, even on uh, Facebook, um, the arm wrestling discussion, like he'll be there in a year, in six months he's beating LeVon, okay dial back 
Even Brian, when I said three years, he's like, oh, okay. Like, that didn't knock him. It didn't make him sad or anything like that. Because he realizes it's it's a big thing to undertake, to, to reformat your elbows and all the pressures and get super strong at pronating, which he's never worked out in his entire life, and get really strong at supinating or rising, right? He's never worked those things out in his life. So that takes time. Um, naturally, if someone asked, naturally, would want top roller hook. He, his build would be fantastic for top rolling. No doubt. I told him that at the beginning, and then I explained my philosophy of why I like to teach people to hook first, and then we got into top rolling. But yeah, he has a big, thick hand and a long arm, and so he would naturally built to bust some hands back and, and have a lot of hand control, of course. Um, but yeah, we didn't, we didn't get, we got to top rolling. We definitely had some top rolling time where he was top, top rolling me. We were talking about hand control and things like that. Um, but a lot of it's just, he's so big up here in the chest and the shoulders that it's really hard for him to move his elbow around Right, and that's something that he's going to have to adapt to, and it's always going to be a struggle when you're that big. Um, and I knew that going into this, I knew he was going to—it was going to be a struggle bus for him to get tight, keep his elbow in, and stay in a super safe position. So it's something that he's going to have to work on. Now, I told him after we were done, I gave—I uh, told him I have all the contact info for all the Colorado, uh, the Colorado arm wrestlers that are nearest to him, and um, you know, so if he wants practice, I fully explain to him how important uh, table time is. Like you have to spend significant time on the table. Like there's no way around it. There's no way you're gonna be this elite guy comparing with LeVon or anything like that, unless you know how to do all the moves and you're comfortable in all of them. And you understand counters and, and if someone's doing this, how to beat that or how, even if it's just hooking or just top rolling, that's still very, very intricate at a high level of how to top roll all the different other types of moves. How do you top roll a low hand top roll? How do you top roll a deep hook puller with a big hand, with a little hand, with like, there's still a lot that goes into it. So I told him, you know, I, I would love to see him get sig significant table time for a year, um, you know, even more table time than gym time. And really, because he has all these muscles. He has all these muscles. And he has to work on his hand and wrist to make it an arm wrestling hand and wrist. But you have to understand, like, he and once he gets those in there, it's, it's going to be so much at play. Like, there's so much girth and, and, and body weight and, and muscle in play that uh, he, he can do serious things. Like, gripping up with him. Just gripping up with him, him like squeezing tight, it sends you red alerts in your head like, oh my God. Like <laughs> if this dude was pissed off and he decided to go, like he would throw me on the table. That's that's what goes to your brain. You're like, oh my gosh, because his hand's so big and he's so massive and strong. You're like, and it feels so rock solid at first. So it wasn't until I really started getting on his bicep and stuff like that. Then I would start feeling a little bit of give or things like that. Or if I really top rolled and he didn't even know like how to cup, you know, really hard and stuff like that. So I'm top rolling a guy that, is brand new and it still took me a lot and I could bust his hand back, but it took a lot. So yeah, I mean, I would love to see if he gets into it. These are all things I told Brian. We talked about it for a while. Um, tomorrow, right? I don't know if it'll be on camera or not. We talked about potentially just doing it off camera, but I told him we're going to go back. We're going to do grip work tomorrow. So we're going to pick, I'm going to try to pick up all the grip implements, but we're going to try to put on uh, we're going to do strap work, right? So we didn't do any strap work today, completely spaced on strap work because we got so busy talking about other stuff that tomorrow we're going to get on the table again. We're going to do strap work. And I told him maybe off camera or if he wants to do it on camera, it's his call, but let loose. Uh, you know, because when he was asking me about his level, I said, well, you didn't really go crazy on my arm, like in terms of like, trying your hardest. I said, tomorrow we're in the straps or whatever. Go for it, right? Like let loose, man. We'll keep you in a safe position and and pull back or do whatever you can as, as hard as you want, and I'll be able to give you a better summary of, of how strong you are on the table right now. Uh, so, like I said, today there was a few small two-second windows, four-second windows where he would kind of gas up for a second and then stop because we I was doing a lot of instructional stuff. So tomorrow, hopefully we can have a, a couple moments where he I let him, you know, go at it. Like, just try to pin me. Stay safe. I'll keep him safe. But just, you know, cut into it a little bit and see and see what you got. So, and I know he wants to kind of know, he'll want to know my summary on it and where I think he could be right now and what he kind of needs to work on and where, where his deficiencies are at, right? Um, so we'll, I'll have a little more info for you guys tomorrow in terms of his current strength level on the table. But I, like I said, he did gas up a little bit today and I know he was like, oh man, I got a sick forearm pump when we're about halfway through uh, the technique talk. So I told him, I was like, I ain't got no forearm pump, Brian. <laughs> I was just messing with him. Um, but yeah, dude, guys, so much potential for sure. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's the day uh, that we chopped it up for a, a while longer. And then we got in the car, we left, got some food, and then we've just been kicking it back here, editing videos and whatnot. All right. So let's get into the chat. Let's get into the chat. I'm here for your guys' questions. Sorry, I just need to say all that stuff. Sorry, I was ignoring the questions. 
Uh, we'll stay live for a little bit longer and answer some of your guys' questions. Uh, saying hi from Warlock Arm Wrestling TV. Hope you are trying really hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying really hard. <laughs> Thank you for being here, man. I appreciate it. Uh, if you guys have any any important questions right now, let me know. Sorry, like I said, I was I was behind. Um, Cybernetic Module asked, "What's his opinion of Levon? He knows who Levon is. He knows he's he's seen Levon. He understands who Levon is, and he also understands that he's not going to walk into that super high level. He understands that Levon has been training his whole life and is doing all the things to be at that level. And so he he doesn't. Brian is not cocky or overlooking any of the steps. He totally understands that hard hard work would be." a must to get where he need to be. And so if he goes into arm wrestling, his goal will be to be beat LeVon, right? 100%. If Brian gets into it, his goal is going to be try to be the best. Uh, so if he decides to get into it, it's over. Uh, it'll be He'll be all in. Carolyn says, Queen, what's your favorite thing so far? P.S. This is nuts. Oh, I'm being asked something? Yeah. Uh, Carolyn wants to know, what's your favorite thing so far? Um, let me tell you. Okay, I got to shorten this, I guess. Um... So Derek and Brian are like the same person. It's so weird. I just have to say that. And um, also, I touched his forearm. You touched Brian's forearm? Yeah. Remember Good. when we were doing this? <laughs> and he was like, Bridget, line me up. <laughs> and I touched his forearm. Just saying. Go lay down. Okay. I don't want to hear any of this. You touched Brian's forearm. What the? I know about all that. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of our, our mannerisms are similar, and it's crazy because when we get talking, especially about like training, we think the exact same on a lot of things. It was weird. Brian would say things that were damn near finishing my sentences. Like we, maybe because I've been watching him so long, maybe I've you know taken some of his approaches to things. I don't even know it. I, I don't know. But when we talk, it was like how I see training, how I see breaking down movements, um, about isolation, about rebuilding certain parts, things like that. When I talk about the arms like that, he's like, dude, like, that's how I do it. That's exactly how I'm into it. So we agreed on a lot, a lot of stuff. So yeah, Brian was awesome. <laughs> uh, Ricky Walker, thank you for another $5 sticking man. Say, keep it up. Thank you, man. Uh, Mark Rice says, training hard, always. Lorenzo Munoz in the house. What's up, bud? Uh, Bobby Ray Paris, what's for dinner? We hit an a random Italian restaurant here. I got some pizza and some pasta. Uh, Bridget had pizza and pretzel bites. Um, that was my question. How'd you, how'd that hand feel? Um, big, I, I think if we'll, we'll measure tomorrow, but I think mine will be a little bit longer. Um, and I have this whole like arm wrestling bubble thing right here, which I've been working on for a long time. So he doesn't have that yet because he hasn't been working on it, but his hand in general is like just super muscly. Like the whole thing is just like, like as if he's Brian Shaw, as if he's like the world's strongest man. He's just been holding thousands of pounds in that hand. Uh, so it's not building like an armrest hand, just building like a super powerful hand in general. Not very specific in like one spot, you know, like mine. It's just like all around, just monster, thick, strong hand. Um, Darius says, how's the hand and wrist? First impression on the table. Like I said, super scary. Hand and wrist is like a, the way I just described it. But the pressures in his hand and wrist were like, ugh. When you guys first grew up with him, it's just like red alert, like run, run, <laughs> run for your life. I imagine gripping up with Brian Shaw feels like gripping up with Richard Lupke's. I would imagine just the grip up. I imagine that's how it would feel. I've never gripped up with Richard, but I imagine that's how it would feel. Like just, just strength and tendons and sinewy and just, ugh. <laughs> like there's so much strength in there. When he's ready to unleash it, it would be wild. Uh, Brian, is Derek from the future? <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's me from the future. Shave my head. Uh, how strong is he already? Like I said, um, Brian could walk into an amateur super heavyweight tournament and win. Brian could go into a pro super heavyweight tournament um, on, on a local level and probably get uh, second or third right now uh, in a pro super heavyweight. And depending on you know which tournament it is, if it's like a major tournament, we'll say like Arnold's or some crazy high level tournament with all pros. Brian could get a couple wins uh, at that level, and uh, right now, I'm talking about like after day one, he could probably go in there and just muscle sideways and get a few wins that way. Um, so definitely at a, at, a, at a very high level. He would be beating every amateur, <laughs> for sure. Um, did you talk about how people can compete at an older age, brother? He, uh, he liked the idea of being able to compete with young guys for a while. Yeah, we did talk about that because uh, Brian's 40. I'm 36. I'll be 37 next month. And um, and he's and the thing is, he was telling me he has no injuries. Like his whole his whole thing about him being in strongman and stuff. He's like, man, it's crazy because you know people talk about me, you know me retiring or whatever. He's like, I have no injuries. I'm not broken down or tore down. I don't have crazy bad arthritis or anything like that. So he's like, it's really hard for me to just say, you know, I'm going to throw in the towel or anything like that when I'm not beat up. Like I'm healthy. 
So, um, so yeah, in general, he still feels good. He doesn't feel like he's over the hill or anything like that. And then at 40, he said he, he's still adding strength and everything. So he doesn't feel like the age number is, is bogging him down. He doesn't feel like he cannot compete uh, at all. He's, he's, pretty, he's very optimistic about getting stronger and stronger and stronger and being able to compete in whatever he pursues, for sure. Who's taller? I think I'm taller. I think I'm like a half inch taller. I mean, the picture is kind of like I'm a half inch taller. I was joking around with him a few times, I think. But I got hair and a hat and stuff, but I think I might be a little bit taller. Um, let's see. Broman started. Who's, oh, do you think he's going to be an outside or inside puller? I think because with his build and the length of his arm, I think he'll be more, um, more damaging and scary as an outside puller, or maybe just a high hook. Maybe he'll arm muscle like Richard Lepke's or like Andre Pushkar, just high and sideways. Uh, I think that'll be where he'll be able to shine the most. Um, I think him going forward and cutting into a hook, that takes a lot. It takes a long time to condition that elbow. And he hasn't, he told me he hasn't done biceps, just strict biceps in years. He said before he got in a strong man, he used to love doing strict biceps, but he doesn't really touch those anymore in terms of just really isolating the bicep. Uh, he'll do like hammer curls, but he doesn't do a lot of really palm up uh, bicep isolated movements. How old is he and how old are you? I'm 36. He's uh, 40. Um, challenge Ryan to an eating contest. I did. I said, hey, man, we should have an eating food uh, video, and he kind of laughed about it. We didn't really talk serious about it, though. Uh, who's hand felt stronger, Collard or Brian? The, the same? The same. The same. <laughs> I'll say with the same. They both felt really strong. Uh, yeah, they both felt really strong. Uh, you went back to the beginning of this stream, so I just want to say that this is so exciting, says Liam. Yeah. I agree, man. I'm stoked. I am still so excited to be here. I'm so excited to go film with Brian more tomorrow. Um, it's just, it's uh, it's amazing, man. It's it, it's a dream come true for me as an athlete, as an arm wrestler and things like that, and as a, as a strength fan. Um, and then for the sport, man, this could be so big. And Brian acknowledges that. I was talking about how awesome this is, having him even look at the sport and potentially, you know, putting this out on his channel and how much it can help. So this is this is mega. This is this is huge. This is, could be a lot of things. Um, I've ripped up with Richard. It's like a mountain system. Yeah, see, that's how Brian pretty much feels. <laughs> um, you just feel the strength. Dope, dope, Brian. Brian versus Derek, every possible. No injuries. I'm sick of drilling over the conversation. Good job, Derek. Big stuff, man. Thank you. No injuries is crazy for someone that has worked out so much in one long world strong span four times. Yeah, it's crazy. You would think he'd be all beat up. He said no. He said he tore a bicep a long time ago. That was the only, that's the worst injury he's ever had is he tore a bicep um, doing, um, uh, axle bar cleans, right? Uh, but that's it. That's the worst thing he's ever had, and that was a long time ago. Um, oh, another 14 month thing from Texas Piranha. Thank you for being a member. 14 months, Mike, you the man. So, wow, uh, never lets, lets me know you're on uh, WTF. Anyways, can't wait to see this awesome uh, content be released. I hope Brian goes uh, all into our mess. Dude, I, I do too, Mike. Like, it's going to be awesome if he does. And, uh, yeah, he's, I mean, he mentioned if he gets into it, him wanting to have more and more people come out to his house and, and train with him. So expect to, if he gets into arm wrestling, see Brian have Devin out and, you know, I don't know everybody just start flying, uh, people out or having people out to, to, to train him. Cause he definitely sees the value in learning from, from top guys. So he'll definitely be, uh, filming content with top guys if he decides to get into the sport. Um, are you going to advise him workouts based on what you see missing? in his strength on the table. The the workouts I, I advise for Brian is just everything. I really have him, it would be having him isolate and train every single muscle that you use for arm wrestling. All of them, right? Get them all strong and then go on the table and start learning different moves. That's how I train. That's how I advise Brian to train. Isolate, I isolate muscles, specific muscles. So different brachial, uh, brachialis day, different bicep day, different chest shoulder day, uh, different, you know, pronation, day or uh, workouts, different rising workouts, things like that. So all the basics will be covered if he uh, ends up lifting the way I lift. Um, you should test his base strength on the main arm wrestling uh, lifts and see how he progresses. Yeah, it's just he's still awkward with those lifts. He's still awkward with the wrist curls and stuff. You'll see in the video where we're testing the handles, like he, every time he tries to do cupping with the handle, he's like, he rolls his elbow forward. And he's just, he's trying to get used to it, right? It's his first time doing it. So he was just like trying to, cup his wrist in, but then would kind of flare his elbow out or like kind of move his shoulders. Like he's still trying to learn how, how to be fluid in those motions, which makes sense, right? Day one. So I don't think I'm gonna have him max out on it yet <laughs> on uh, on the lifts, but he, once he gets those motions in, like I said, guys, 
he's a big lift guy. Once he gets, if he decides to go for arm wrestling, I guarantee there's going to be videos coming out of Brian doing max effort pronation, max effort cuffing, and when to show his lifts and where he's at. I, I can almost guarantee it. I'll talk tomorrow to uh, to his cameraman, the guy that runs his YouTube stuff. I'll talk to him about it, but I'm pretty sure Brian will be down with putting out max effort lifts. I just don't know if I want to test him on day two or day one about trying to go all out. Uh, last thing is, I don't want to be the guy that hurts Brian Shaw or gets Brian Shaw hurt. Um, Brian going high and sideways sounds very dangerous for whoever he's saying. Yeah, it does. Paul Strength, hey Derek, you gripped up with both. Do you think Brian got caught if the match uh, happened anytime soon? Also, how is Brian's hand compared to Collins, uh, if you already answered? Uh, the hand feels similar. I think that if the match started and say Brian just did whatever, like we just told him to let her loose, I think Brian would go through Collins bicep. I think Brian would jam shoulder sideways. It's just dangerous, so I have him not doing that because he's at such a high risk of being able to hurt himself. But I think that if he let it loose on Collard, that Brian would, would probably go through Collard's bicep, I think. Um, are you going to try strongman lifts while you're there? No, definitely not, man. I am not ready for that. Did you test his back pressure? No, we didn't go super heavy on the lifts. We were just going over instructional stuff. I'm here to teach Brian how to arm wrestle, not to test him and get super and go all crazy with him. I mean, we're getting some small movements where I'm, I'm feeling his strength, but we haven't gone all out. Tomorrow, we're going to get a little more competitive on the table. I'm going to let him really gas up on my arm. Um, but, yeah, we, we're not going all out. That's not what we're here for, man. <laughs> um, let's see. A uh, cup drag from him would be interesting. Yeah. That'd be a lot of views. Uh, Jeff Legrande says, I'm happy to have, for you having this opportunity. His strength building expertise will help your arm wrestling career. The arm wrestling table looked very small between you and Brian. <laughs> yeah, it did. It's a normal size table. Uh, once again, shout out to Arm, uh, arm Assassin Strength Shop for sending that table out there. Um, Hulk Hogan Vitamins, you should uh, try to contact Paul White, aka The Big Show. Imagine a legit match at East uh, East West West w, or AEW or WWE event. That would be cool, man. Um, I don't know, if, if I keep getting these awesome collabs and stuff and I have some more ideas after this, some big collabs, actually I have some big collabs set up and I have some more ideas after this, uh, then yeah, man, we, maybe I can get some badass stuff going for sure because I got some awesome collabs coming up like that are huge, that are huge. Um, Schoolboy Brian, he's just learning. It's day one. <laughs> It's day one. You guys, like, just give him some time to learn how to use all these, these muscles. Um, Schoolboy's been arm wrestling a long time, right? So he would probably be able to, just off technique and speed, be able to, like, top roll Brian or something like that and get and get away. But, yeah, just give him a little bit of time to learn how to do it. The strength, the base raw strength is there. It's at a very high level. But if you don't know how to, you know, pronate or supinate while you bring your shoulder forward and while you slide your elbow and all the movements together, like, it's it's a lot. And so if we want to see, can he do it all right now? First thing and beat guys have been arm wrestling forever. No, not yet. Uh, Derek, you articulate so good. So, uh, so glad you went there, me, Brian. Thank you, Carolyn. I, I try. I try. Uh, JR uh, Urs, Ursua says, are you going to try strongman? You would smash. No, <laughs> no, no strongman. Do you think that you start high reps and slowly working at low reps? Yeah, that's what I advise, Brian. I said, keep it around at the beginning in these small wrist movements. Uh, keep it around 15 uh, or something like that until you get the movements dialed in. And then as as time goes on, then start uh, start lowering the numbers. And that's, he's, I know he's excited, but Brian's not uh, he's not all about pride lifting. He, he totally understood. He goes, oh, yeah, definitely. He's like, I'll slowly work my way into it. I'm really excited to eventually lift heavy in these lifts and see what numbers I can put up. But I de it definitely makes sense to slowly get into it and build up the numbers. Um, have you ever seen Roadhouse? Yes, I have. Is that my sister? <laughs> what's up, sister? Uh, what's the timeline we should give Brian? Like I said, um, I think that if everything was perfect, if Brian did everything perfect, learned perfectly, trained perfectly, everything, I think Brian could be knocking on some elite doors in around three years. Right? And that's fast, guys. If That's really fast. Uh, if you grew up with LeVon, no. How do the hands pressures compare? No, I have... I've gripped up with LeVon for funsies. We never actually got into it. He never actually gave me real resistance, so I cannot compare the two. Derek is live. Yay, Drew. What's up, man? Um, Joe is so fun. Uh, this, Joe Amen is so true. It's off the charts exciting. Exciting. I agree. Carolyn, um, do you know if Devin is planning on meeting Brian? Devin called me last night when I was in the hotel room, and he was psyched for me. He said, dude, this is awesome. This is huge. You know, work with work with Brian. Get him to fall in love with the sport, man. Show him how awesome it is. Show him how to use that giant, strong hand of his. Um, and Devin was uh, stoked. Brian, definitely, when we talked about uh, Devin, and 
he, I told Brian, I said, De Devin would be perfect on your podcast. He'd be a great person to learn from. Um, and he definitely had nothing but good things to say about Devin. So I, I, I would say at some point you can plan on seeing a Brian and Devin collab if Brian decides to keep moving forward with arm wrestling. I would, I would probably bank on the fact that you would see a Brian and Devin collab if Brian decides to move forward with it. Uh, Brian has insane grip strength. Yes, he does. Tomorrow we're going to do grip. We're going to do grip and we'll see how strong that is. I guarantee, I know it's stronger than mine, but it's going to be awesome. Uh, thanks, Jeff, for being a great advocate and ambassador for the sport. Love it. No problem, man. This is our life. This is our biggest hobby, man. We have to push it as much as we can. I'm thank so thankful for me being able to have whatever small platform I have compared to Brian and so thankful for him giving me this opportunity to show him these things and, and move forward. Um, Man, like it's just a dream come true. It's an opportunity that I'm just the luckiest guy in the world uh, to have been presented, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna run with it, man. I'm gonna run with it and keep pushing this sport that we love to death. This is this is my life and a lot of our lives for sure. Derek, can you go and attend the tournament in Dubai on the 28th? I do not plan on attending. Adam did text me about it. It's a great idea. I'm, I'm glad they're doing that, but it's a lot of money to go. I have to call time off work. It, it just doesn't make a ton of sense for me to go out there to do that. Um, uh, how about his left arm? We didn't touch the left arms. Uh, but he told me his left arm is relatively close to his right arm in most lifts. He said his left hand had some problems in the past where it's not as strong uh, anymore. But uh, he says he, and besides his hand, he's relatively strong left-handed. So, But we didn't get into the left. We stayed on the right pretty much all day. Did someone say Roadhouse? <laughs> did you use a strap? No, tomorrow we're going to get into strap arm wrestling. We did not get into strap arm wrestling today. Tomorrow we're going to strap arm wrestling, and I'm going to let him get into it a little more and really start turning up the horsepower, kind of see what so, see what he's got. Can you do pull-ups at your weight, man? Yes, I can do um, neutral grip pull-ups, dead hang. I can probably do around 10 pull-ups. Uh, how did it come about you meeting Brian? Uh, I just reached out. I reached out and I lucked out. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, is it still working yet? Did you use a strap? Uh, Coldstone with a uh, $2 super chat. Thank you for the super chat, Coldstone. I appreciate the support, man. You're the man. Um, did you strap? Like I said, uh, no. We will we'll get into it tomorrow. Strap pulling is going to be tomorrow. Benji's still ducking me. He's afraid I will call it him, says the Drew24. Benji, stop ducking Drew. He wants a super match with you, man. Who is taller? Says, uh, LeVon, you outclassed the bum. Um, I think I'm taller, guys. I think I'm taller. I, a few times I drove around Brian and I'd like jump next to him and be like, I'm taller. Um, I really do. Th I think I have like an, an inch on him or so, or a half inch, I think. Um, 10 year size is solid. Thanks, man. Cybernetic module. Brian is a, uh, is a ridiculously competitive athlete. Sounds like he's seriously invested in approaching arm wrestling in his signature clinical style. Man, I hope so. And and he's such a great dude, and he and he's so he's so humble. It is that's the biggest thing? Not just like as a human, but in his approach to arm wrestling, he fully understands how where he's going to be if he decides to get into it, and he doesn't you know. Oh, I have all this pride. Like, I'm already going to be the man, this and that. Like, Brian totally understands. He's going to start at the bottom. He's going to work, put in a ton of work and, and work his way up if he if he gets into it. So that was really refreshing to see how humble his approach is into the sport. That made me feel really confident and, and even more happy for it to see him get into it is because he knows, like, he's going to have to put in the serious work. He's not overlooking that, thinking he's going to walk in at some wild level and be beating everybody. Like he, had, like, he has the tools, and I'm telling you that. I'm so excited for him. But it, it's just so uh, relieving to know how humbling he, how humble he is getting into the sport and, and respecting what LeVon's done, respecting these guys that have put in all that work and understanding there is a road ahead. And even though that road is going to be shorter for Brian than most, it's still a road, and it still takes this work. So, yeah, he, he's honestly he's inspired me in a lot of ways. Just having these talks with him, four-time world's strongest man, um, someone I look up to so much. It, it was awesome just – hearing him talk and, and learning from him and checking out his point of view on a lot of things. Uh, Cody Whitehead says, this is honestly a fantastic opportunity for the both of you and for arm wrestling as a whole because of how big of a person he is on social media. Yeah, they can definitely get a lot of eyes on the sport. I mean, we already have a lot of eyes, but I think this is going to blow up um, for sure. Everybody's going to want to see Brian Shaw when he shares on his channel. Brian Shaw, arm wrestling, are you kidding me? People are going to be really mad we didn't get into it and have a grinder, I think. <laughs> but that was, that's not what it was about. It was about him learning and learning the ins and outs of the sport. Um, like I said, tomorrow we might get into it a little heavier. I don't know if he's going to film it. It might be just a behind the scenes type of thing, um, but uh, I think we're gonna grip up a little bit more tomorrow and, and a little more, a little more power into it. And then um, I can see if what I felt today was what it really is, or if he was still holding back. Because if what I felt today was him getting into it, I told you my thoughts on that. But if that was him holding back and he, he was only giving me like eighty percent or sixty percent, oh, then you guys might see a whole new video tomorrow of me coming back freaking out. 
<laughs> if, I might have a whole new live stream tomorrow where I'm like, guys, he wasn't even trying on day one. He wasn't even trying. <laughs> like, and the, he's the strongest man ever. <laughs> so that might be the case. That might be the case. But like I said, there was a few situations where I filled them gas up and really start getting into it a little bit. And uh, I thought I started feeling the bicep open up a little bit like that. So I thought I had a good read on, on where he was at. But I could have been completely wrong. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. Um, let's see. Uh, how long are you staying with Brian? I leave tomorrow night. Uh, me and Bridget fly back to California tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Wait, 10 o'clock at night? What time? 7. 7 o'clock at night. We land at 10. Um, he can definitely be a monster. No doubt his frame is crazy. Yes. Uh, what's a good way for wrist curls like amateur or pro elite? I, <laughs> I just explained like there is no, it depends on the handle. It depends on the pulley system. It depends on, you know, the bearings. Is there a ton of static, uh, on, you know, are the, are the cables rubbing on things? Like there's so much that goes into that in terms of how much weight you're moving and how you're doing the cupping and how thick the handle is. Like I can't just give you a flat number on that. Sadly, I wish I could. Uh, how do you feel about arm wrestling exploding in popularity? Dude, that's you know, I got an arm wrestling tattoo right here on my shoulder. It's a shitty tattoo, but I got one. Um, it, that's my life goal, man. That's something that I've poured my heart and soul into, and a lot of people have. And Because um, like I said forever, man, if we want the sport to grow, it has to be us. It has to be the people that love it and are obsessed with it. We're the ones that are down to put in the work for free and just go out there and grind and promote the sport. And and it'll come back to us tenfold, right? Like you you get what you put into it. And I've put so much of my heart and soul in arm wrestling, and I, and I always will. It's bigger than me. It's it's provided so much for me in my life in terms of times where I've needed it. And just in general, building my friendships and all a lot of skills and things I have, I've learned from arm wrestling and being around the community. So I owe the community a ton. I owe the sport a ton. And it's not hard for me to think about how to give back or if I should give back, man. It's it's like, duh, right? If I have an opportunity to give back to the sport, I'm about that. Um, let's see. Um... Just tell, uh, tell him to go full-time arm wrestling after he retires from Strongman. I told him that. Hopefully he does. Who's heavier? Brian's definitely heavier. I don't know how heavy he is. We didn't talk about his weight today. Um, I'm 350. Generally, Brian's anywhere between 4 and 450. Um, I'm guessing he's somewhere in there, but, dude, he's so big, I, I can't tell. Um, Ricky, with another $5 super sticker. Thank you so much, man. Always dropping off the stickers. Uh, other Strongman going to go nuts for it once they see your collab. Hope they call you. Yes. Yes. Uh Hopefully they all get into it, man. That'd be awesome to see some of those guys transition into uh, arm wrestling. I saw uh, Martin's Lisi's a few months ago, or like a month ago, at a strongman event in Southern California. Martin was also one of the world's strongest men. He won in 2019, uh, 2019. Anyway, Martin's one world's strongest man. I saw him. I got his phone number. I mentioned I want to show him arm wrestling. He said, let's talk. So when I get home, I told him after I do the Brian Shaw thing, I'll get home and I'll hit him up and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about me potentially going out to Martins and helping Martins uh, learn how to arm wrestle, hopefully. Uh, so many versions of wrist curls there are. Uh, Bobby Paris, do you uh, work like six days a week normally? Seems like you work a lot. No, I work three days a week uh, on average. I just the rest of the time is with my daughter and training for arm wrestling and sleeping and then hanging out with, with her every so often or she gets real mad at me. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh, sorry, guys. Dang it. Oh, you guys kind of, uh, your sides are so similar. It makes, uh, you train with him even better for him because you aren't someone who has a non-extendable elbows or stupid, crazy endurance or something like that. Who are you talking about, Cody? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, and that's one of the reasons he, he wanted me to come out because he figured, you know, we're the same, we're similar size. And so I can show him how to use his size. Is he the biggest person you've seen in person? No. My best friend, my daughter's godfather is seven foot tall. Like, no, he's not the biggest person I've ever seen. Maybe the, probably the most muscle I've ever seen on a human in person. Like the heaviest, most dense, pure muscle type guy. Yeah, probably that. But in terms of the biggest, no, I, I know like taller and heavier people, but not with that much muscle. Um, let's see. Did you tell him how he can be competitive even in his older years? Yes, I definitely told him that. Where do you prioritize wrist rise? Um, it's in the top three. Um, I think Devin has it at number one. I think I have cupping at number one and pronation at number two and rising at number three. Uh, everybody kind of has a different outlook on rising. Um, but yeah, I taught, I told Brian, I told Brian that I said, Devin, I think puts it at number one. I put it like number three. So yeah, I do cupping and pronation first before I I'd focus on rising. Uh, hope you guys eat big in town tomorrow at the vegan restaurant. <laughs> 
I'm down to go to a vegan restaurant. I'm, she probably won't want to. You'll still be hungry after. Yeah, I'll still be hungry. Oh, man, look at this name. I, oh, I can't wait to try this. Valet Sem Semila Luo Canava Hivaxi Litella. I probably butchered everything. They should add armor something back in the strongman events. We talked about that. We talked about that event. It was so funny. I forgot. So Brian's like, oh, he's like, yeah, there was a strongman, or there was an armor something event in strongman. We should roll that clip right here in the middle of the instruction of the arm break. That's where the arm break happened. At, where, and I was like, Brian, uh, Brian, Brian, no, no, Brian, do not add an arm break clip to this video. I said, that is a no-no. In the arm wrestling community, that is a no-no. We do not share arm break videos. It's like NASCAR drivers sharing NASCAR crashes. It's weird. It's not good for the community. It just scares people. We understand it happens, but you don't need to go pushing it down everybody's throat. It just scares everybody, man. I was like, so we don't do that. And he goes, oh, okay. Because I'm already in trouble with the arm wrestling community. I'm sorry, guys. He's like, all right, we're not sharing the arm break clip. <laughs> but Because he wanted to share that on, uh, in the video. I said, please, please don't. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, where were we at? Oh, you guys started going quick. You guys started going quick. Um, Snap, I was watching your Shaw behind the scenes. Okay, cool. Yeah, I we put it together pretty quick. Uh, me and Bridget had some footage. What's your hand measurements? Shaq's hand length is ranged from 10 to 10 and a half inches, and his hand span from the range of 11 to 12 inches. We'd love to see him and Brian Shaw mess around. Uh, mine is a little bit over 9 inches. This? Yeah, mine's a, this way is a little bit over 9 inches. That's the only one I know off the top of my head. Uh, and I think mine might be a, a tiny bit bigger than Brian's, longer than Brian's, I think. So his is probably about nine. Um, I'd like to see the big show and great Kali armor, so that'd be cool. Uh, what do I miss? Everything, Devin's Forum. You missed everything. Hey, you guys, check out Devin's Forums. Uh, he made a hype video for me going out and seeing Brian. Check that out if you guys get some time. For sure, it's a great video. Um, you are a real arm wrestler who trained for, uh, for a long time as a human being and not a monster like some people. All of I'm not trying to bash or anything. Thank you, Cody. It's all good. Uh, Great says, 1995 Strongman event had arm wrestling. Imagine it making a comeback in the Strongman. They have uh, Moss Wrestling, so who knows? Yeah, but, like, you have to be so... You have to have a, a background in arm wrestling. You have someone that's an arm wrestler going there, and they're going to wreck those Strongmen. You know what I mean? They'd have to really spend time learning how to arm wrestle. It's not something you just dabble in. Um, missing Locked and Loaded finals says, Canceled Laughter. Um, I might be there watching the weekend before I'm going to be in Texas uh, at the Arm Wrestling Uncensored event. So, but I might be there to hang out. How does this game feel? Feels amazing. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. Brian Shaw uh, should train with Corey West. Yeah, it'd be cool to see them grip up uh, for sure. Family and sleeping is most important. Hey. Uh, Whataburger or In-N-Out Burger? Uh, for me, In-N-Out Burger. Very happy for you, Derek. Aussie arm wrestler Jake in the chat. What's up, my boy? There he is. Dead set legend, you guys. Jake, Aussie arm wrestler in the chat. That's my boy. Uh, so happy for you, Derek. This is awesome. Thank you. Cup definitely number one says Angie Lepke's. Uh, Andre Lopez, I, I agree. Derek may have just summoned demons from the underworld with that. <laughs> uh, Joe Nilo, member for nine months. Joe, thank you for always supporting the channel, man. I appreciate you. Have a great night and awesome time out there, man. Looking forward to seeing more, brother. Keep killing. Yes, sir. Uh, Dave always uh, forgets the hashtag menthol. <laughs> Can Brian Shaw beat Ryan Bowen? Oh, man. Ryan will really have to try to run. I don't know. I don't know. No, I'll give it to I'll give it to Ryan Bowen. I'll say Ryan's been armor a long time, even though he's a lot smaller uh, than than Brian Shaw. I'll have to give it to Ryan Bowen right now, just just because Brian hasn't learned how to isolate things yet. Uh, but dude, once he learns, if you I mean, if Ryan actually did it, we'll say he starts arm wrestling three times a week. I think it's a matter of a few months before he can beat uh, Ryan Bowen. Not and that's not a knock on Ryan. I'm just saying that's how much potential Brian has. My hand measurement is 8.5 with a longish arm. I should focus on top roll, hurting my elbow when I go too hard. Take your time. Um, Derek being a nice guy, he is. <laughs> Ron the Don, yes, always. I hope the collab blows up your channel big time. Thanks, man. Uh, you guys, there's the link tree. Bridget's behind me posting the link tree in the chat. Uh, if you guys want to check out any of my socials or anything like that, or go to the shop and buy some shirts or hats. We'll check. This hat right here, California Arm Wrestling, or my team hats. Or the shirts or the tank tops, that's all on that um, on the page on the VAWSwitch.com. You guys go over there, get some hats and some shirts. Make Bridget work. Make her start packaging up some stuff and shipping stuff out. She's been way too bored lately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cody, uh, did you set his 
test his fundamental strength like side pressure, pronation, back pressure, and things like that, uh, and how do they feel. No, we didn't, we didn't get into the compound movements like that. I told him they exist. I explained to him that there's different outlooks on arm wrestling. Some people just arm wrestle. Some people just do compound movements in a gym, and then some people just isolate each muscle like I do. And I explained my thought process behind each one. He, tend, he, he agreed with me. He, he thinks that isolating the muscles is the, is the way to go. So it won't be a side pressure max. It'll be all the components of side pressure. Working your chest, your shoulder, working your wrist, your elbow, things that all co join together to make side pressure. So you would see it maxing in very specific movements, not pure side pressure max or back pressure max. It wouldn't be like that. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, his hand is so big uh, with Justin Velp, Ryan's making it hard to run, basically superpowered Colin. <laughs> yeah. uh, who do you got, Brian Shaw or Tom Holland? I've never pulled Tom Holland, so I, I couldn't tell you. Did you pick a nickname for yourself yet? No! No. You know what, Brian? If Brian had a badass nickname for me, maybe I'd let it stick. <laughs> uh, I was about to link that, but you did, Bridget. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I got to get to bed. Mike, see you later. Jordan Davis in the house. There he is. What's up, the Reacher, the man himself? Hey, Tony, how you doing? I'm chilling, man. I'm in Colorado doing some collabs with Brian Shaw, <laughs> the world four-time world's strongest man. Uh, good night, brother. Have fun. Uh, and Bridget, keep this man on the path to greatness. There you go. Inner elbow conditioning tips. Arm wrestle more often. Or um, JM presses apparently can work pretty well. Uh, I haven't given JM presses enough time to know how well they can work on my elbows, but I've heard fantastic things. Derek, the only one who can keep up with chat and still go on rants, I know, right? I still like Barrick Smith. <laughs> Eric Castillo, my boy, what's up? The cameraman himself. Um, Cybernetic module, what does Bridget think of arm wrestling? Has her opinion of it changed since meeting you? I'll remind you, you're on an arm wrestling stream, live stream. Oh, arm wrestling is the best thing I've ever watched in my entire thank, life. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. You guys got it, you know? Are you planning to try stones with Brian? No. <laughs> no, I don't want to look like an idiot. Although I don't mind looking like an idiot, but, I mean, it would just be lame and it would hurt. Uh, do, you have, do you have shave, like clean shaven all the way? <laughs> what? <laughs> Cody says, did uh, any specific strength of his stand out in, to you in any way? No, man. It's just it's such a complete strength. You can tell he's strong in every direction. Uh, so, no, nothing specific. Uh, he was just crazy strong in all directions. I mean, it took a lot for me to top roll and to actually get his wrist busted open. Like, it, I don't know if there's a clip of it. Hopefully, it's in his video. Um, but, yeah, you'll see me. I'm, like, damn near going underneath the table. I'm pulling up and back so bad before I finally crack his wrist back. And that's just him, like, not knowing what he's doing, just trying to hold on. I'm, like, going all the way for it. Um, uh, just get shot, do what? Static one-arm chin-ups on an Olympic ring. <laughs> Tell her to get her to compete. I'm trying, man. I, I, I beg her to arm wrestle all the time. She doesn't me? want to. That's a lie. That is a lie. He says I'm not allowed to arm wrestle. She's going to get hurt. Because I'm too strong. Yeah, because she's too strong. Um, Derek, do you think you can beat Toddzilla? I think I can beat Tadzo. Um And that's no knock to Tadzo. He's amazing. That's the dude. I just, I think I have what it takes. Uh, another $10 super chat. Oh, wait. Click it. There we go. For Mike, he said he's going to sleep. Says, did he get to tell you Isaac popped his right elbow, so not sure if he can pull me right on the 22nd now. Uh, but I said I'm down for left, and he can't do right. Uh, then they will have a backup. Oh, but if he can't do right, they'll have a backup. I know you told me that, Mike, but I appreciate the super chat. Thank you for the super chat, the $10 super chat, man. Thank you for the support, brother. I appreciate that. But yeah, you told me that uh, the other day, like two days ago. Um, hopefully he comes through. Hopefully you and Isaac Luna have that match. It's going to be a badass match. I wanted to see it. Um, you guys follow Michael Edwards or the Texas Prana. He's having a match with Colorado's own uh, Isaac Luna. Uh, hopefully Isaac didn't hurt himself too bad and he can get on the table with you. What's a good side pressure exercise? The cable fly with, a, um, with an arm wrestling stance good? Cable flies are awesome. Cable flies are my favorite chest exercise for arm wrestling because it brings your humerus across your center line and not a lot of other lifts can do that. So I think cable crossover is fantastic for arm wrestling. I think it's the number one chest exercise for arm wrestling. Um, this is great. We need to get him on Team West and make the Georgia's nerve more the Georgian nervous. In time, in time, in time. Um, I saw a log lift at an old gym tonight. I'm... Uh, I'm joined back to that gym Thursday. Blood flow rehab gym is done for me. <laughs> Carolyn, you're killing it. 
Uh, who are your next competitors? Um, I, I don't have any matches planned yet right now. Um, if it took you that much to topple him, what makes you think Ryan with a smaller hand could topple him? Um, I'm just not sure that if Ryan, if Ryan slammed into a hook, um, how it would fare yet. Um, pull, eat, sleep, repeat. Yep. Do you want Brian to do a pinky one arm chin up too? <laughs> Congratulations, champ. Thank you, uh, Daniel Vivas. 3.5 gripper with Brian. Brian doesn't have his grippers over there. He has the Juji grippers, but he doesn't have the COC grippers. So uh, we don't have grippers to mess with. But we have the blobs. We have the inch dumbbells, things like that tomorrow to mess with. So my hands are going to be jacked up after we're done with grip. Um, let's see. Uh, do you see a specific lane Brian might be in uh, the best in uh, press? I mean, I think his press would be deadly, but I wouldn't want him rushing. That's very dangerous. I, after some table time and after he gets more comfortable messing with the press and understanding the dangers of it, then, yeah, I think, I think obviously, it could be really strong. Um, I, I would like to see him do, like, a high hook or, like, a posting top roll uh, right away. I think that would be a, a good lane for him. Um, but we'll see. Um, have you only lived in California? No, I've lived in uh, a couple places in Florida, in Fort Myers, and I stayed in... Uh, up in Jupiter for a while, and then I moved, I stayed in Syracuse for a year, and then I went down to um, Kirksville, Missouri. I stayed there for about a year, and then I lived in San Diego for a little while, and then back to uh, where I'm at in Southern California. Um, who's facing Devin East versus West? Oh, I can't tell you guys that. Just kidding, I don't know. I don't know who he's facing. Um, Brian versus the strongest in Dubai right now. Uh, can beat the best, I bet. Uh, you should do a pull-up contest to see if you, who can do the most pull-ups. I'm down. I'm down. Do you think Brian, three to five years from now, could challenge LeVon? Their hand uh, hands must be close in size. Um, I think Brian, well, I've measured with LeVon, and I had longer fingers than LeVon. It was like this. So, and I, have, I think I have longer, longer fingers than, than Brian, but just added a little bit. So I think Brian will have a longer hand than, than LeVon. But, and I said... Within three three to five years, if Brian does everything correctly, yeah, he could be knocking on some crazy high high level doors. Um, I want RBJ to teach Brian Shaw. Yeah, that'd be super cool. J Web Fitness, yo, what's up, man? Uh, is I hook just a top roll um, top roll with without pronation and arm drag? No, you're still pronating. It's just you're not over pronating and dropping back. Once you take the hand and you establish hand control, then you can drive straight sideways, go back into a hook, continue to roll out. You can do whatever you want from a high hook. Um, Derek has to teach Shaq to arm wrestle now. Devin said recently he's the strongest arm arm wrestler he's ever gripped. Dude, I gotta reach out to Shaq. You guys, let's do it. Let's get these videos done, and then we'll go for Shaq. Uh, he's so smart, and now knowing he has no injuries, that's a scary man right there. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, exactly. Um, train up Brian to beat Kirill uh, Sarichev, uh, the Russian bear. Kirill is beastly. Uh, Efren Sanchez, yo, Derek, what's up, dude? Yo, what up, man? Uh, Diaz says, most people don't train the press. Would be cool to see, uh, see Shaw develop and uh, train it. Yeah, it would for sure. All right, guys, I'm all caught up with the chat. I'm all caught up, I'm all caught up, I'm all caught up. So, like I said, tomorrow I'll go live again. Um, we'll do another behind-the-scenes video for you guys tomorrow. Uh, no upcoming matches for me. Uh, Brian and Eddie are awesome. Um, I told Brian I'm going to train him to beat Eddie Hall, and he got really excited about that. Uh <laughs> Um, Brian Shaw versus Larry Wheels. I think Larry, right now, because Larry knows more what he's doing on the table, I think Larry will be able to open up Brian for now. But like I said, I might not even felt the real Brian pressure. Tomorrow we'll get into it, and maybe I come back just mind blowing for tomorrow. So that could still happen. Um, Ravaz versus Morozov. I think Ravaz takes Morozov's wrist. Have you tried Sabian arm wrestling thing? No, I haven't seen one in person yet. Uh, can I clip some of your answers out and make a small video uh, like I did with my Devin East vs. West update video today? Cheers, bro. Yeah, of course. Uh, even with a high number of watchers or scrolls through, like there's 10 people <laughs> the press, do you think Dave Chafee has significantly leveled up? Dave Chafee's amazing, and I love seeing him transition to different moves. Uh, Shaw too bulky for a press, in my opinion. Needs to be tight for a press, but then again, Jerry presses and he's an animal. True. Uh, do you think his elbow conditioning might be difficult for him, easier considering his natural strength? I think he's 40. I think he has a ton of horsepower. I think his elbow is going to hate him if he starts getting in real practices and real hook wars or movements where he has to use his elbow. And I told him that. I said he's at a high risk for injuries because of his age and his strength level. Um, but, you know, I also told him you kind of go, go to go through the pain to get to, to get where you need to go in the sport. So it's kind of a must. 
Uh, Peace, man. Thanks for answering the questions. No problem, Diaz. Can't wait to see the video. You guys go check it out on my channel. If you guys could share it. Like, I'm not asking for a ton, but if you guys get a chance on your Facebook or on whatever, if you guys could share the YouTube video I'm putting out there, you guys, like I said, this is how we grow the sport, just by our wrestlers doing what we can for the sport. So if you guys like what I'm putting out there or when Brian releases the videos, which I don't know, could be any day, could be tonight. I don't know when he's going to release the videos. Um, share it. Watch it. Share it. Comment. Just do those things. I know it doesn't cost you guys any money. Please, I appreciate it. Uh, you guys just help push the stuff out there. Um, I'm trying real hard. I'm trying real hard here for us, for the sport. I, don't get me wrong. I know it's helping me out. But, guys, the reason I'm so excited about this is because what it can do for the sport that I love so much. Um, yeah. All right, guys. That's it. I'll talk to you guys later. I got to go hang out before she starts getting mad at me. Yeah. Thank you for everything. I'll see you.